In section 13.4, we'll continue our discussion of conservation of energy, but in this section we'll feature problems where there is work done adding energy to our system or the loss of energy due to a non-conservative force. We'll start out by looking at the equation for work and the equation for loss. We should note that in positive physics, uh, work is, referred, is referring to the energy that gets added to a system by a non-conservative force. Loss is energy lost by the system, but loss is really just a, uh, a form of work where the work is negative due to a force acting opposite the motion of an object. Work can be found by multiplying the force applied to the object times the displacement of the object. And in this case, D really just is the length of the path. Most problems will have an object moving in a straight line, but we can also work with curved paths. Um, F is the force or the component of a force if the force is acting at some angle to the path. Uh, and it's only the force or component of the force in the direction of the path, in the direction of motion. Forces or components of forces that act perpendicular to the path uh, do not perform any work. They do not add any energy to the system. And the common forces that do work that add energy to uh, the system is an applied force or thrust, uh, but this is the, that's not the only forces that can do this. This is just a common uh, general theme. We can find the loss, and remember loss is just a form of energy, by multiplying the force times the displacement. And it should be noted that forces that cause a loss are acting opposite the motion of the object. Common forces that cause loss include friction and drag. And again, friction and drag can actually add energy to, uh, to, to a system, but most, most often friction and drag act opposite the motion, and so they usually are going to contribute to a loss of energy. In this example, we have a 50 kilogram fridge that starts from rest and is pushed 12 meters across a floor by a person who exerts a force of 150 newtons. The fridge experiences a 100 newton force of friction and we are to ignore drag. Part A wants us to calculate the energy of the system prior to movement. So for this, we just have to um, look at all the types of energy. I'll start with elastic potential energy because there is no spring or elastic band, nothing is bending or changing shape to store up elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy will not be a consideration for this problem. Likewise, the fridge is not moving up and down, and so gravitational potential energy, we can say is zero. And you see here that I set the reference level to the location of the fridge, so we can just say that uh, GPE is zero. Initially, the kinetic energy is zero because it's not moving. And when we add all these forces, uh, all these energies up, we get the total mechanical energy. And so we start with zero total mechanical energy. In part B, we're to calculate the work done on the fridge. So whenever we have to calculate work, uh, work done or the loss of energy, uh, it's important to draw a free body diagram so that we can account for the forces that act in or opposite the uh, direction of motion. So in, uh, in this case, we'll have the weight force acting down, the applied force of 150 newtons uh, pushing to the right, the ground will support the fridge with a normal force that acts up. And then there's going to be that 100 Newton uh, frictional force acting opposite motion. When I do a free body diagram uh, for the purposes of determining work or loss, I also like to include a quick note to indicate the direction of motion. In this case, the direction of motion is to the right. And so, uh, the, the any forces that act in the direction of motion are going to contribute to the work done and in this case the applied force is acting in the direction of motion so for part b we're asked to calculate the work the work done is f 
times d. And remember, the F here stands for the forces acting in the direction of motion. And in this case, that will be the applied force of 150 newtons. And it's stated in the problem that the, uh, the, the distance moved is 12 meters. And when you multiply those two together, we get 1,800 joules of work done. And remember, the, uh, the, the idea behind work is this is the energy that gets added to the system. Part C wants us to account for the loss, and the loss formula is exactly the same as the work formula, but remember, forces that act opposite motion, and in this case, that's going to be the force of friction, uh, only forces that act opposite motion contribute to uh, a loss of energy. So we're going to multiply the force of friction, which was given as 100 times the displacement of the fridge, which is 12. And so this will cause a loss of 1,200 joules for the system. Part D wants us to calculate the energy of the system after moving uh, 12 meters. So for this, we're going to look at conservation of energy. Conservation of energy just says we can track the energy uh, changes and, um, and, and see what that does to the energy. So the initial total mechanical energy plus any work, work is added energy, minus any loss of energy will give us the energy that we have at the end. We started with zero energy. We added 1,800 joules of energy by performing 1,800 joules of work. We lost 1,200 joules of energy due to, the, uh, due to the frictional force. And so what we have left over is the total mechanical energy of 600 joules. So we end with 600 joules of energy. Now, at the very end, the, uh, the, the fridge has not moved up and down, so the gravitational potential energy has not changed. There's still no elastic potential energy, so the elastic potential energy has not changed. But the total energy has increased from an initial of zero to 600. Well, what kind of energy did, did, did we increase? Well, it's gonna be kinetic energy, right? If there's no gravity ener uh, potential energy, no elastic potential energy, uh, the total mechanical energy that we have at the end is just going to be kinetic energy. And we can use that kinetic energy to determine the speed because we have an equation uh, that relates kinetic energy and speed. So that kinetic energy has to be 600 joules. The mass of the fridge was given as 50. If we simplify this, we get the speed squared is 24. And if you take the square root of both sides, you get the speed as 4.9 meters per second. Okay, in this next example, we have a two kilogram mass that is held against a compressed spring that stores 80 joules of elastic potential energy. It is then released, and it moves, and then it crosses a rough patch between points B and C that have a length of 5 meters, where it experiences a frictional force of 10 newtons. It then slides up a ramp until coming to rest at point D. And now we're going to account for all the energy types throughout the entire motion of the block. So uh, we'll start with, in part A, looking at the, um, the different energies at point A. So at point A, uh, it says that it is held against a spring. So that means that the kinetic energy is going to be zero because it's not moving. Uh, it also starts at the reference level, therefore the gravitational potential energy is zero, and we are told that the elastic potential energy stored in that spring is 80 joules. And when you add all those up, you get 80 joules to start with. Now, 
the uh, the 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 block is then released and so it starts to move the spring will decompress and so when it moves from point a to b the uh, elastic potential energy is going to drop to zero because the spring will become uh, uncompressed point b is also at the reference level therefore the gpe gravitational potential energy is zero now, in between points A and B, if we were to draw a free body diagram for the block, we'd have the weight force acting down and the normal force acting up uh, as the block moves to the right. The weight force is, uh, is conservative, and so this cannot change the total mechanical energy of the system. The normal force is non-conservative, but you'll notice that it acts perpendicular to the motion of the block. And since the normal force acts perpendicular, it will not perform any work. If there is no work and there is no loss of energy, the total mechanical energy has to be conserved between points A and B. And so we started with 80 joules at point A, so we're going to end with 80 joules of energy at point B. Now, uh, that's going to mean that the kinetic energy is the type that accounts for this 80 joules of energy that we, that we still have. So the kinetic energy has to be 80 joules at point B. And we can use that to determine the speed of the block at point B because we have the equation that relates the kinetic energy to the speed. And if we start, if we have 80 joules of kinetic energy with a mass of 2 kilograms, we'll end up getting um, speed squared is 80. Taking the square root of both sides, we end up getting 8.94 meters per second. Continuing the story, we now want to find the energy at point C. But in between points B and C, we now have a non-conservative force that is going to cause a loss of energy. The frictional force will cause a loss because it acts opposite the motion. Okay? So, how much loss occurs between points B and C? For that, we will multiply the friction force times the displacement. The friction force is given as 10 newtons, and the distance over which that 10 newton force uh, acts is going to be 5 meters. And so we are going to have a loss of 50 joules of energy. Remember that we started with 80. That means that the total mechanical energy is going to be 80 minus 50 or 30 joules of energy. Now, at that point, there's no elastic potential energy because the block is no longer in contact with the spring. The gravity potential energy is also zero because point C is at the reference level. And so that 30 joules of kinetic energy has to be the kinetic energy. Okay. Point E, we want to find the energy at point D. So at point D, Okay, which is at the top of the ramp, it's stated that it comes to rest. So we have lost all of our kinetic energy. It's not in contact with the spring. The spring is uncompressed, so there's no elastic potential energy. And between points C and D, there is no uh, forces that add energy that do work. There is no uh, frictional force uh, between point C and D to cause a loss. Therefore, the total mechanical energy at point D has to be the same as the total mechanical energy at point C, which was 30 joules. Well, the only type of energy that's not accounted for 
is gravitational potential energy. And so that has to be that 30 joules. That's where the 30 joules of total mechanical energy end up. And uh, you can see that there has to be some gravitational potential energy because it has uh, moved to a higher level. And we can find the height of that level because gravitational potential energy is m times g times h. We know gravitational potential energy is 30. We know the mass is 10. And so the height is going to be 30 divided by 20 or 1.5 meters.